Section six of the Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sandra Robinson. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume One, Section six. Tuesday, twenty six. My mind was wholly given up to God, and I have a great hope that the gospel will yet spread in this town. On Wednesday there was a moving among the people while I preached at N.P.'s, and afterward returning to town, preached in the evening. On Thursday I felt power and life in my soul while preaching to a large number of people at Mr. G.'s. On Friday I preached in the Neck and at Joppa. Saturday, 30. Perceiving the great wickedness of the people who were swearing and drinking in a tavern, Great struggles arose in my mind about preaching there. However, I broke through every difficulty, and felt both life and power in dispensing the word among them. Lord's Day 31. This was a day of power and comfort. I rode to Joseph Presbury's, preached three times, and met the classes. Many of the people, through grace, were able to give a good account of their experience. February 1. Was favored in preaching to a number of people at D.R.'s, and my mind has been kept by the grace of God. Tuesday, too. Was greatly assisted in preaching today, both at Swan Creek and Mr. Dollum's. This morning I breakfasted with Richard Dollum, and found that he was very fond of Mr. Law's works. He treated me with great kindness. After preaching and meeting the society at the ferry, I went to Jacob Giles's, a man much talked of, but what he is I know not. In principle he appeared to be a Quaker. He was much troubled with the gout, which, he told me, his father had before him. He said his father cured himself of the gout by milk and moderate diet, but threw himself into a dropsy. On Thursday, after preaching at Deer Creek, I rode to P.B.'s. My present purpose is to put all the people who are fit for it into bands. Friday 5. Many people attended at F.'s, and my soul was enlarged in preaching to them. I then rode back to P.B.'s, and put the people into bands as I had designed. Saturday 6. My mind was calm and serene this morning. I preached with some power, and we had a comfortable meeting. W.D., a lad about sixteen or seventeen years of age, exhorted the people. He appeared to be a promising youth, and I gave him a license to exhort. Lord's Day 7. Some great critics attended at the preaching house today, but I preached twice and spoke freely. Monday 8. Though the weather was very cold, I went to W.B.'s and enforced on a dull congregation these awful words of our Lord, quote, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? End quote. I went afterward to the widow Bonds and spoke closely to the girls who appeared to be somewhat serious. Tuesday 9. After preaching to more people than usual at A.S.'s, I went to B.'s in the evening and both met the class and formed some bands. I also gave them a copy of the proper deed for securing their preaching house. Wednesday 10. I went to C's and preached. This will be perhaps for the last time, for it is a disorderly house. I then went to Aquila Galloway's and preached with some comfort. There is room to hope that the Lord will do something for the people there. Thursday 11. The congregation was large at J.M.'s, and I preached with plainness so that the sleepy people seemed to awake. I then went back to C's and preached with some satisfaction. But Satan was close at my heels. However, the Lord gave me power to resist him. Friday 12. The Lord enables me to stand fast in the midst of temptations. My soul possesses inward and spiritual power. Many people attended preaching today at J.O.'s. I afterward met the class, and then gave an exhortation in the evening. Lord's Day 14. Many country people came to hear the word of God at the point. Some came twelve miles before those of the town had left their houses, perhaps before some of them had left their beds. I found some life and power in preaching both at the Point and in Baltimore. Monday 15. Rose this morning with holy thoughts of God, and we had a good time in public worship. Wednesday 17. I preached and met the Society, and employed Mr. M. to draw up a deed for the house in Gunpowder Neck. Thursday 18 preached with power, both at N.P.'s and Mr. Galloway's. Friday 19. A few people attended at Mr. M.'s. Going afterward about four miles to Mr. D.'s, I preached and met the Society. Most of them appeared to be under a good work of grace. Lord's Day 21. 
The weather was excessively severe, yet many people came to hear the word at J.P.'s. I rode about six or seven miles to preach in the neck, but never felt colder weather. The water froze as it ran from the horse's nostrils, and a friend said the water froze as it came from his eyes. However, after preaching to a few people, I returned. Monday, 22. I had sixteen miles to ride to preach to a few people, and five more to J.D.'s to get my dinner. I have suffered a little by lodging in open houses this cold weather, but this is a very small thing when compared to what the dear Redeemer suffered for the salvation of precious souls. Tuesday, 23. Glory to God! I had peace. Wednesday, 24. After preaching with plainness to a considerable number of people, I then went to J.D.'s, where many people attended, and we had a comfortable time. My old opponent, Mr. E., met me here, but he did not appear to be so forward as he had been. I rode thence to Rocky Run, and preached there with satisfaction. Mr. G. and his wife treated me with great kindness. Thursday, 25. I had a good time in many people at Mr. L.'s. Two letters came to hand today, one from York and one from Philadelphia. They entreat me to return, and inform me that trouble is at hand, but I cannot fear while my heart is upright with God. I seek nothing but Him, and fear nothing but His displeasure. Lord's Day 28. After preaching yesterday at S.F.'s, I returned to Friend P.'s, and preached twice today, then rode to Mr. D.'s, and spent the evening comfortably. Monday, March 1. Mr. D. and myself rode to B.'s, where I spoke with great plainness of speech. There appears to be some reason to doubt of the people in general here, though the young women seem to be deeply serious and thoughtful. I then went to Captain S.'s, but found very little satisfaction. The man and his wife are, I fear, too fond of their own opinions. After preaching here, I went to B.'s again, and spent some time in serious conversation. I afterward prayed, and gave an exhortation. I then rode to M.'s, and preached, and returned to C.'s, and preached there, but found the old man too much of a Quaker in principle. He objects against prayer in his family, and greatly discourages his daughter, who strives to live in the fear of God. Friday, March 5. Went to J.O.'s, where we had a melting time, and the people seemed much affected both in the day and in the evening. Satan has assaulted me very much of late, but hitherto the Lord hath helped and delivered me. I came next to Baltimore, and had many to hear the word. Saturday, 6. Went to the point, but the people seemed very hard in their minds. In the evening at Baltimore we had a moving, melting season. I humbly believe the labor was not in vain. Monday 8. Rose this morning with a determination to fight or die, and spend an hour in earnest prayer. Lord, keep me ever watchful. I was also much comforted by a letter which I lately received from R.O., part of which is as follows. Quote, I know not what it will come to. Almost every person seems to be under a religious concern. There are about twenty-two persons already joined in society at Seneca. At Georgetown four have been lately enabled to rejoice in God, and one at Rocky Creek. Blessed be to God, who hath not forgotten to be gracious. End quote. Thursday 9. This was a day of sweet peace to my soul. I went to dine with one Mr. L., and found him and his wife both serious, preached in the evening with power. Wednesday 10. I went to N.P.'s. It was a rainy morning, but a time of power to those who were present. In going thence to Mr. G.'s, it was with great difficulty we crossed the water. The next morning I set off for Gunpowder Neck, but found the Great Falls very high. However, I got there about one o'clock, and found it a good time while preaching the Word of God. Friday 12. Preached a funeral sermon at J.W.'s from Isaiah 57, 1, 2. Quote, the righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. End quote. This was a solemn time indeed. What melting and weeping there appeared among the people! There was scarce a dry eye to be seen. Oh, that it may not be as seed sown by the wayside! After preaching I rode to Mr. D.'s, and met with Brother K. and Brother W., and found myself abundantly comforted in their company. Lord's Day 14. Preached at Bohemia. There were but few people, though it was a melting time. Rode then to S.H.'s, but was much shut up in preaching. Monday 15. Found my mind this morning free to do the will of God, and was more than ever strengthened in prayer. 
but set out for Wharton to-day with my mind depressed in such a manner as I hardly ever felt it before. In my journey my heart sunk within me, and I knew not why. At a certain Mr. D.'s, at the crossroads, many people who appeared to be strangers to the truth were waiting to hear the word. I stood at the door and declared, quote, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. End quote. I spoke with great feeling and exerted myself much, but could not get my spirit free. They persuaded me to stay all night, but it was as if I had been bound in chains. Tuesday, 16. Went to R's and found myself delivered from my shackles. But still my spirit is not altogether at home. It longs for God. I do humbly and confidently hope to live more to God than ever. Lord, keep me every moment. Wednesday, 17. Went down to the lower church, but with some backwardness of mind. However, there were many people here who were still and attentive, and I felt a melting sense of God in my own soul. Friday, 19. I spoke with power to many people at Newcastle, went thence to Wilmington, and spoke to a few people with great feeling. Lord's Day 21. But few attended at IH's because of the rain, but I felt myself greatly assisted. Went thence, through the rain, to Newport, where many people attended in the evening. They appeared to have very little sense of religious things. Monday 22. Being a rainy day, we set out late for Marlborough. There was, notwithstanding, a large congregation waiting. Though unwell, I gave them an exhortation at night, and I.R. preached. He has been of some use to the people here. Tuesday, 23. My mind was serene, and I felt a nearness to God, a determination to live to Him alone. Went to T.E.'s and felt much life while preaching to a large company there, but was afflicted with a violent pain in the head. Wednesday, 24. Many great people attended the preaching at W.'s, and we had a comfortable time. Rode thence to S.H.'s. Many Quakers were present, and it was a moving season. I then went about twenty miles, through wet weather and bad roads, to Mr. T.'s. The night was very dark. The road was through the woods, and it was late before we reached the place. But by the help of a good guide, I got there safe at last. Quote, In all my ways thy hand I own, thy ruling providence I see. Assist me still my course to run, and still direct my paths to thee. End quote. I was somewhat troubled to hear of Mr. W., who had printed some of Mr. Wesley's books for the sake of gain. This will not do. It does by no means look well. Friday, 26. Many young people attended, among others, at Christine Bridge, while I preached from Ecclesiastes 11.9. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thy heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. End quote. Deep seriousness sat on the faces of all, and the mouths of many gainsayers were, in a great measure, stopped. Saturday, 29. Rode to Bohemia and lodged with a Presbyterian elder. The next day I preached in the schoolhouse. But these people, who profess religion, could scarce be serious during the time of preaching. Mr. B. and some other great opposers of our doctrine were present at S.H.'s at three o'clock. I therefore changed my purpose, and preached from 1 John three twenty-three. Quote, and this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. End quote. And I had a great hope that this was well received. Monday, 29. Rode twenty miles to Susquehanna, and just got in, almost spent, time enough to preach at three o'clock. Hitherto the Lord hath helped me. Praised for ever be his dear and blessed name. Tuesday, 30. A quarterly meeting began. After I had preached, we proceeded to business, and in our little conference the following queries were propounded, namely, 1. Are there no disorderly persons in our classes? It was thought not. 2. Does not dram drinking too much prevail among our people? 3. Do none contract debts without due care to pay them? We found that this evil is much avoided among our people. 4. Are the band meetings kept up? 5. Is there nothing immoral in any of our preachers? 6. What preachers travel now, and where are they stationed? 
it was then urged that none must break our rules under the penalty of being excluded from our connection all was settled in the most amicable manner mr s preached a good and useful sermon from joel two seventeen quote, let the priests the ministers of the lord weep between the porch and the altar end quote, etc many people were present at our love feast among whom were some strangers but all were deeply serious and the power of god was present indeed brother o preached a very alarming sermon and brother s gave a moving exhortation the whole ended in great peace and we all went in the strength of the lord to our several appointments saturday three preached at baltimore where we had a comfortable meeting lord's day four i delivered a funeral discourse but was much shut up in my mind went thence to the forest and preached at seven o'clock with great comfort several rich people attended preaching the last three days and did not seem displeased with the plain truths of the gospel one or two persons here seem to be groaning for full redemption my heart is grieved that i have not been entirely devoted to god but have great reason to be thankful that i feel more and more desire after god thursday eight i left baltimore j k and three exhorters being present we held a watch night at pease and the lord was powerfully with us friday nine preached at l's with power but found it a heavy cross while preaching at mr g s lord's day eleven preached at bohemia but the people there seemed to be but little affected rode thence to s h s where many people attended and i was enabled to speak with solemnity from deuteronomy thirty nineteen quote, i have set before you life and death end quote, etc went thence to newcastle but found them out of order then rode to red clay creek where i preached with power thursday nineteen many people came to hear the word at mount pleasant wednesday fourteen came very weary to philadelphia but the sight of my friends greatly revived me and all seemed to be in peace tuesday proved to be a day of peace to my soul part of which i spent in visiting the people the next day i was employed in writing to england and after preaching in the evening with power i went to rest in sweet peace and awoke in the morning in the same frame of mind may this day be spent to the glory of god and may my soul yet praise him more and more on wednesday after spending part of the day in visiting i preached in the evening from these words quote, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief end quote. and humbly hope it was not labor in vain while unbelief that destructive root of all other sin was exposed to the people on thursday there was an appointment for me to preach in newtown brother s and myself crossed the east river but it was with difficulty that we obtained horses we then attempted to proceed on our way but it was a severe morning with much snow and wind the snow came full in our faces so that after riding a few miles we were lost in the storm and imperceptibly turned our course back toward new york which we never discovered till we overtook some people on the road we then crossed the river back to the city where i continued till monday friday i preached at new york with these words quote, the lord is good a strong hold in the day of trouble end quote, and felt life and power in dispensing the word on saturday i visited the sick and gave an exhortation to the people lord's day four after preaching in the morning on hebrews twelve fifteen i went in the afternoon to church and heard mr e preach a useful sermon in the evening i preached with much freedom on ecclesiastes eleven nine quote, rejoice o young man in thy youth end quote, etc the young people appeared deeply serious may the blessing of the lord attend it and great fruit appear in the time to come the next day i rode to bloomingdale and preached with satisfaction and then returned home and found it a blessing to labor in the vineyard of the Lord, both in season and out of season. On Tuesday morning my mind was clear, my heart was fixed on God, and Christ was precious. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul! New York is a large city and well situated for trade, but the streets and buildings are very irregular. The inhabitants are of various denominations, but nevertheless of a courteous and sociable disposition. There are several places of divine worship, the Episcopalians have three, the High Dutch one, the Low Dutch three, the Lutherans two, the French Protestants one, the Presbyterians two, 
the seceders won, the Baptists won, the Moravians won, the Methodists won, and the Jews won. The city abounds with inhabitants, but the exact number I could not ascertain. End of section 6